As we move forward into this digital age, you'd be hard pressed to find something that is not being phased out for new technology. In the world of sports, almost every major league is implementing some sort of technology, whether it's robot umpires in baseball, replay reviews for the NBA and the NFL, or goal line technology in football. Video Assistant Referee, or VAR, is supposed to make the game more fair. An explanation directly from the Premier League itself states, Premier League match officials make mistakes and those mistakes can have an impact on the outcome of the match. Because technology lets people see immediately on TV or on their phones that mistakes have been made, why not use that technology to help what is happening on the pitch? Wow, what beautiful stuff there from the Premier League. Brings a tear to my eye. But wait, what if the referees using the tech get it wrong? I will admit, upon first look of a play, I occasionally jump up and shout foul if it serves my bias. How do we know that this technology is going to be used for the good of the game? I have seen plenty of instances of VAR having spotty decision making. Hell, there's even an ESPN list released every year about which clubs have been screwed the most by VAR and which clubs it's helped the most. The Premier League's first two weeks unsurprisingly have brought us some more controversy regarding the technology. In this video, I'm going to take a look at what VAR is, some of the specific written uses of VAR, and if the VAR in the Premier League follows the rules they have written for themselves. Finally, I will give a final judgment on whether it's time to get rid of VAR in our favorite game. Without further ado, let's get right into it. VAR is essentially a team of officials who assist the on-field referee by using video technology to review key moments in a match and provide feedback on crucial decisions. When a controversial incident occurs, the VAR team reviews the footage and communicates their findings to the referee via an earpiece. The referee can either confirm their original decision, they don't do that very often though, or signal for further review. You may have seen referees make a rectangle shape with their hands. This is to indicate that they are calling for an on-field review or that a decision has been overturned based on VAR's advice. The outcome of these reviews is usually shown on screens around the stadium, keeping fans informed of what's happening. According to the International Football Association Board, IFAB, which is responsible for the laws of the game, VAR can only be used to assist in cases of clear and obvious errors or serious missed incidents. VAR is limited to certain situations, including decisions involving goals, penalties, direct red cards, or cases of mistaken identity. It's a system designed to reduce errors in critical moments. So VAR is meant to overturn clear errors in refereeing. The promise of VAR sounds great. In its most ideal form, like how it's written, every critical call of the game would be made correct and there would be nothing to argue about. Unfortunately, that is just not the case. I think one of the big questions here is, what is a clear and obvious error? I'm sure some of you who clicked on this video probably can name multiple examples of VAR's clear and obvious errors being incorrect. If this is the case, shouldn't VAR not even give their input if their observation is subjective? As it's written, VAR should be silent if they don't have the means to overturn a call, yet they seem to be involved in every decision on the field. There are quite a few negatives to take from VAR, but another big issue seems to be the fact that the people behind Professional Game Match Officials Limited, or PGMOL, aren't very transparent in the decisions that affect the outcome of matches. I think the biggest negative is the effect that this technology can have on the result of an individual match. Now, I am not saying that Ipswich would have stolen a point away at Champions Manchester City this week, 
but they were up 1-0, and then a controversial VAR review took a play that was not clear and obvious and gave Manchester City a penalty. Later in the game, a play that seemed like a more clear and obvious foul in the box that would have given Ipswich a penalty was not reviewed by VAR, nor was the ref advised to look at the play. I completely understand that mistakes will happen, but the lack of consistency between very similar plays is staggering. Now, I heard that in match week one, Bournemouth was screwed by VAR, but in match week two, they lost two points because of it. VAR overturned a Bournemouth game winner because of a handball when the ball touched the top of the player's shoulders. The play was very fast, there seemed to be some controversy in the decision, meaning it was not clear and obvious, so there was no reason VAR should have been overturning the call. Instead of the win, Bournemouth get the draw, and to be completely honest with you, you could see the entire play shown, it's the top of his shoulder, like the handball rules are very clear that you can use your shoulder. <laughs> These decisions are truly affecting the game in negative ways. Last season might have been just as bad. One of the most notable incidents occurred in September when Liverpool's Luis Diaz had a goal wrongly disallowed for offsides during their match against Tottenham. The error sparked widespread outrage, bringing VAR's reliability into question. Clear and obvious factual error and should have resulted in the goal being awarded through VAR intervention. That is unbelievable. That is a bad one. That really, really. I mean, they said significant. That is very significant. And I think to it be makes fair, you wonder how many others. A similar controversy arose in November when Arsenal faced Newcastle United. Michael Arteta, Arsenal's manager, was left furious after Anthony Gordon's game winning goal was allowed to stand, despite the ball going out of play in the lead up to the goal. Both Liverpool and Arsenal took the rare step of publicly criticizing the decisions, reflecting the growing dissatisfaction with VAR among clubs and managers. Nottingham Forest has even gone so far as to write letters of complaint to the PGMOL and reportedly considered legal action over VAR-related decisions. They also accused one of the officials in the replay booth of being a Luton Town fan and was favoring Luton Town in the relegation battle. It's not just the clubs that are frustrated. Fans have become increasingly disillusioned as well. The long delays and poor communication within stadiums have chipped away at the spontaneous joy of watching football live. Players too have voiced concerns, with many admitting that the thrill of celebrating a goal has been diminished by the constant fear that VAR might intervene and disallow it. If you go look at the championship, which does not have VAR, it feels so much more organic. At this point, every goal I see, I am waiting for a VAR check. It sucks. As these incidents pile up, it raises questions about whether VAR is truly improving the game or simply adding to its complexities. Well, to answer those questions, the Premier League and the PGMOL think it's pretty clearly improving the game. All the clubs in the Premier League had the chance to vote out VAR, and other than one club, I believe it's Wolverhampton Wanderers, the vote was a resounding yes to keeping VAR for the upcoming season. So if all of these clubs voted yes, then VAR must be doing some good then. In fairness, VAR gets a lot of calls correct. The Premier League reported that 82% of decisions were correct in the season before VAR was introduced, rising to 94% of decisions being correct in the 2019-20 season. I also noticed that referees have allowed weak fouls to be played out as flopping doesn't exist as much in the Premier League anymore, which is something that I heavily criticize. I will say there really are some positives of the VAR system. I think the league knows how negatively most fans view the VAR system and a lot of them have the right to be upset about certain calls. I also want to give the system some leeway since it's only been around for about five years. So it takes more time than that to make something the best version it can be. They seem to be trying to mitigate some of the damage that VAR has been causing by trying to implement this six point plan this year. The six points are one, improve the clarity of the threshold for VAR intervention. Two, reduce delays to the game 
which includes the introduction of the semi-automated offside. Three, improve the fan experience so they are more aware of why a decision is being taken right up to the referee announcements. Four, improve VAR training and consistency. Five, improve transparency. And six, superior education and communication plan, which has involved key messaging across clubs and the media. That's all fine and good, but truthfully, I'll believe it when I see it. I think there is a way to make VAR work. But at this current time, it seems to me that VAR is much too big a part of the game. People don't come to watch these referees. They come for the game. Obviously, refereeing is essential. It's not necessary to VAR check things that are subjective or unclear. Here's my take. VAR has a place in football, but its current implementation is flawed. It should be used sparingly focusing on clear offsides and egregious fouls that the referee missed. If a decision requires minutes of deliberation and multiple slow motion replays, it's not clear and obvious and shouldn't be overturned. The on-field referee should remain the primary decision maker. VAR should support, not supplant their authority. By limiting VAR's scope, we can retain the benefits of technology while preserving the flow and excitement that makes football the world's favorite sport. What do you think? Is it time to scrap VAR entirely or can it be salvaged with the right reforms? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, at the end of the day, it's the beautiful game that brings us together. Controversial calls and all.